We have Courtney and Mike from Spirit Box. Welcome, 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 guys. How are you how are you doing up in the are you you're in Canada right now? No, we're in America. You're in America. How's it over there? Good. It's nice to come home. We we got home about a week and a half ago and yeah, it's quiet. You don't hear the bus and people yelling and the rumble strips and everything. So it's good. In America or in Canada? Well, we were just on tour for a long time, so it's just nice to come home. Oh, <laughs> Okay, I got it. We live in Los Angeles now. Oh, you guys moved. Okay, I didn't know that. A year. It's just we've never we're not really home yeah. to really establish that we're living here. That makes sense. Do they do they respect Tim Hortons over there though? That's the real question. I mean, I don't even respect Tim Hortons. No, over I don't here. respect Tim Hortons. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't even I, respect Tim Horton the guy. Yeah, not even the guy. I mean, that's that. but come on, you gotta throw down with like a Tim bit once in a while. Like, there's there's something about grabbing a solid Tim bit and and starting your day off right here and there. Come on, right? Maybe. I love going there and hearing old people yelling at minimum wage workers about how they didn't give them the right donut. It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly it. Perfect way to start off today, chat. Welcome everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today we're joined with both Mike and Courtney of Spirit Box. It's been a it's been a while, guys. I saw you in Toronto. Oh my god. It was that history. I forgot when it when it was. Was it like March or April or something? May. I think I think that was May. Yeah, May. around that time. A long time. It's been a while. You guys just just been on the tour grind, right? Like just pretty much nonstop. How's how's that been for you? Like, it, is it exhausting? Is it fun? <laughs> How, how's that going? Thought about ourselves. Yes, we have. I don't like being on tour for nine, ten months straight. Yeah, turns out. Mm, yes. Uh, it it wasn't that long. It felt like that, but we we did our first uh, run in March in Australia early March and then we went right right to our headliner. We went to Europe and then we just finished up with uh Shine Down and Papa Roach across America. So there hasn't really been a lot of time just to kind of be in one place and chill. So it's nice to uh to be back like I was saying before. But I mean amazing experience. I yeah. just don't think we'll do that again. But it was that yeah, long. <laughs> it was important though. I think we definitely came out the other end mm-hmm. like a way tighter band. Yeah. Right. Um Obviously, like friendship wise, but specifically for what the you guys care about is, I feel like touring has just made us tighter musically all together. That's good. Age and I have like it was funny on the last tour, the last couple of shows. I was like, huh, I don't, I don't feel nervous, you know? Like, yeah, we were opening band on the last tour that we were on, and was playing like a lot of amphitheaters and arenas, and it occurred to me like halfway through that. Like we weren't nervous and any time this would be like a no brainer. A, a lot of you would assume that this is just how all musicians should, should feel, but I didn't feel like this. I didn't have like confidence and stuff not going wrong. And so I don't, now I don't, now I know if something does go wrong, it's going to get fixed and we're going to be able to like play through it. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, it was definitely really valuable. I'm glad that even though it was long and I prefer to go on shorter tours, um, mm. like in the future, it was extremely necessary to do. Yeah, for sure. And it was fun. That's awesome. How, how's like the, the shows in, and how's it differ between like playing, you know, a show with a lineup with like modern metal bands and core stuff versus more like the legacy, bigger, you know, acts like Papa Roach and Shine. Like, is there a difference in like crowd response and vibe? Like, because I'm so, I'm so curious about it. Because you guys are probably, the, I'm assuming the heaviest band on that, that, that tour too. Yeah, we were pretty polarizing on that bill for sure. Um, playing with the legacy acts, you have a lot you can learn from. You know, you're kind of just absorbing like all of this wisdom and experience. And then playing to our people, it's more comfortable. But there's there's more of almost like a responsibility and more of like the pressure and the stress is all on you. Right. So it's nice to kind of get a crash course in uh, in both of those situations. Um, I mean, it's 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 almost like this year we kind of got you know what was the backlog of us not being able to tour all in one go. And um, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's an incredible uh, opportunity to be able to play in front of so many new people, people that don't even really know what metalcore is or what right. you would define our band is. And a lot of the people when we would first start playing would probably be like a little confused or maybe they'd find it a little jarring. But then at the end, like 
their heads bobbing and you, yeah. you know it's like i got you if you, you know get, what if I mean? you get the head bob you're in bro it's done uh, yeah that's, that's the so it, yeah. it's cool to it's cool to have that um you know you win them over a little bit it occurred to me this year that a lot of people in our like in the community that are obsessed with the subgenre specifically they only they they only go to shows and to me there's a difference between a show and a concert yeah okay and it's a show i feel like you're there it's like it it reminds me of the community that you feel in a local band right. where i'm there to see every band and it's about like it's not just about seeing the headlining band you know it's the reason like bands used to have five bands on the bill it was all about like experiencing the other bands too like you 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 wouldn't just show up for the headlining band you would right. come you know doors are at 6 you'd show up at 6 and watch all the bands and then a concert those people are diehard fans of that band specifically and they're willing to pay a lot of money to come see that those bands hmm. uh, and those bands have earned it and us being there is of much less consequence. Mm, so okay. I'm glad about that because um, people weren't hostile or anything, but we had to like earn them not being apathetic. Gotcha. And um, so, I mean, my, my dream is to have every concert feel like a show and every show feel like a concert, if that makes sense. Okay. But, but um, when you're in like, when you're in an arena and there's, 20,000 people in there that are not there to see you. Right. And most of them don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> kind of liberating, yeah. you know, because it's like yeah. the best you're just, you're walking away with some new fans. And at, and at worst, you're getting, you're learning a lot about yourself as a performer. Play, playing Holy Roller in an arena is, <laughs> yeah. is a lot of fun. I was going yeah. to ask, Holy Roller must go hard as fuck. It's just huge. <laughs> like, the club versus a theater versus a arena versus a stadium are all, versus an outdoor festival, they all feel like different as far as you, like if you're thinking about it from like the, the presentation part. Right. And even like how you sound. Right. You know, like how like, sonically like how we sound like All it's different. a completely different environment yeah. so it's really fun to learn how to conceptualize how we would sound in that environment and hear it so. yeah right. I, I would assume even like in an arena setting like something like rotoscope might actually even like hit harder live than than like holy roller because it has that more dancey big beat that like is a bit more sonically like can fill the entire arena and it and it sound really sick but i i have no idea but it's just it's cool that you guys yeah. have such a diverse like lineup of songs that you can just kind of pick and choose what you want to throw out for that you know strategically we actually went a little bit more on the heavier side for the for the shine down run just Ooh. to kind of really be polarizing <laughs> <laughs> but there's you know there's some songs that have a lot more space to them which you know in a bigger room there's there's not as much that can get lost you know what i'm saying so right yeah, so that's it's just really cool to to learn that and get the opportunity to experience it and figure out what works, what doesn't. And I mean, it's it's experience that you would never get otherwise, other than just like going for it and figuring it out. Um, someone can't really just tell you that you have to yeah. go learn it. So, yeah, so cool. we learn a lot from those bands too. Like, yeah. just not even like about performance and stuff, just boring stuff mm. like logistics, gotcha. where to do your laundry. Yeah. <laughs> And then what to do if you have a problem with your crew, yeah. just uh, any sort of obstacles and issues. It's like, it's it's great touring with bigger bands because you get to play to their fans. But mm. honestly, it's like selfishly, it's the um, the priceless part, like them. It's the catering. catering. It's, the, yeah. it's the catering, bro. I would imagine. But, but aside from that, aside from that, and the catering, yeah, yeah, it's just really cool. Um, Every time one of those bands drops some knowledge on us, I'm just and they walk away. I'm just like, fuck! I'm so grateful that I got to hear someone explain that to me. Yeah, right. No, that's that's so awesome. And I mean, it's been cool to see you guys do your thing over the years and and touring, especially with like like having crazy lineups and then still playing. You know, the smaller, more it's not even smaller, but like the more like scene metalcore kind of stuff. And seeing you guys fucking yeah. specifically, and like when you guys come to Toronto, I'm always like hell yeah because you guys do your thing and you fucking kill it and uh it's always fun just just saying what's up to you for a second how's that like dynamic because you guys have such a special dynamic because you guys are married like how is that in a touring world you guys like is it is it 
is like, oh, I have my spouse here, so it makes it super exciting. Like, what's what's that dynamic with you guys too? Because it's something so unique in this world. It makes it awesome. I never have to be away from Courtney. It's great. You know, like we. This is all we really know. I mean, we were in an old, our old band. We were in it together, and uh, making music together uh, is always a ton of fun. And you know, it, it sometimes you kind of have to like not blur the lines. Um, right. Yeah. But I'd rather figure that out than like be away from her for months at a time. You know what I mean? That sucks. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I do find it funny that sometimes like, you know, some people you'll meet on the road and they'll be like, oh my God, like, what do you mean? Like you're touring with your wife? What's that like? And I'm like, it's the best. Like clearly, clearly if you're excited to get away from your significant other for months at a time, there's something wrong. I get that though. <laughs> no, I like, understand. It's but not like just the being around each other. It's like you're we own a we own and run a business together yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. So some people would that's their dream to do that with their spouse sure some people that would be their worst nightmare because it could like, be really hard to like like you see i said to yeah. separate that if it's like oh something's going wrong like you have to deal with just regular band or tour shit and then it's like oh like now like we're are kind of arguing as a band but now it's like oh shit we're arguing like in a relationship and that's like this must be so awkward if that has to happen but it's great you guys can just balance it because that's it's some people can't do that it's really tough for them think, to figure it out i think being in a band is like being in a family anyways you know what I mean? yeah. there's not much of a difference in that in, in that way you're living in close quarters for such a long period of time and like mm. you see each other every single day you're basically like you know that's just kind of the way that it is um i mean for me, unless there's something I don't know about, it's the best. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, except, you know what? You know what sucks about it? Um, when, you know, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen. It's when the, you get in a hotel and the air conditioner just isn't cold enough, hmm. and everyone else has their own room, and they don't notice, and they go, "No, it's fine." And then you're like, "We are sharing a bed, so it's too hot." It's too hot. <laughs> I mean, it keeps me up at night. And like, Europe doesn't believe in AC, so that was a struggle. So that's a, that's an obstacle that we've really helped to overcome. That's been the really <laughs> the, the AC in hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! You guys, you guys just announced a fun Europe. I I was so jealous when I saw this. It's it's is it you guys loathe and architects? Is that what I? That's, I'm so jealous, man. That's like that's modern metal paradise right there. Not a flight. Why aren't you coming? You yeah, know? you should come. Okay, it's once Expedia.com. Let's go. Because like that's how did how did that come about? I mean, I'm assuming it's probably just usual like offers and then like sure, but like was there anything particular with that one? Because that is a lineup that's like come on. When I saw that, I was like done happiness all night for whoever goes there. That's that wasn't a business move. That no. was pure passion yeah friendship and us just doing something that we wanted to do and We've, it's not strategic or anything we just i want to watch those bands play every night and get to hang out we've been wanting to tour with architects for a very very long time and i mean like it's no secret that we're big loathe fans as well so um in the summer we actually got to play um some shows with architects and we hung out with them quite a bit and you know with sam being on yellow jacket so we finally got to do that live too and so, yeah, we just spent a lot of time together and, and they kind of, there was whispers about them possibly doing a tour in the new year. And they're like, well, we'd love to send you an offer. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it just came around and we we're like, let's just do it. Like it's, it's obviously a little different to do Europe in, in, you know, February or end of January, whatever right. it's going to be. But um, we're excited, man. It's yeah. going to be really great. It's, it's a bunch of new rooms we've never done before and a bunch of new places. So I feel like their fans are going to really be really accepting of us. Yeah. And I'm so excited to get to play in in those types of venues. You know, they had to upgrade a couple of them, and yeah. um, I would love to see what the, what it's like to play in in those different bigger markets in Europe because we've never done that ourselves before. Yeah. So we've only just done like festival season. Right. Um, so I'm so excited. I really I really think it's going to be from the moment like Loathe starts playing to the moment Architects ends their set. I just feel like it's going to be a good show for everybody yeah good that, time. that's modern metal paradise you get to learn a lot from them too yeah yeah for sure well that's awesome 
Well, speaking of Modern Metal Paradise too, you guys uh, gave some fun smackers with the recent singles, and I have to, I, I have to give you credit when you guys get get fucking filthy with the song, especially Cellar Door. Courtney, you smashed the shit out of that ground, and it made me hype as fuck. Um, that whole thing, you you would laugh so hard if you knew the whole story behind me slapping the ground. We got time. Let's go. So get Ori, with the video, he like when he sent the treatment, he's like, and then. Courtney's gonna like punch the ground and and there's a shock wave and I was like I'm not I'm fucking doing that <laughs> I'm not fucking doing that that's like you know and, and then I'm like when Michael was kind of going back and forth like hmm. figuring out the treatment us editing it and stuff uh, and telling Ori some feedback you know I'm like Tom I'm not I'm I don't want to fucking punch the ground hmm. and Michael's like just. No, I'm not going to say that. Just let him do his thing. Just like humor him. Right. And I was, I don't want to waste time that day punching the ground over and over when we can be <laughs> doing another shot. Like that's going to look dumb. And then Ori's like, all right. So the day of the shoot, I was like, all right, I'll be chill. I'll, I'll play along. And then, and then Ori was like, all right, Courtney, it's time to punch the ground. And I was like, about that. I just don't really want to punch the ground. And it, it was just so funny because saying the phrase punch the ground over and over is hilarious to me. Right. And, and Ori's like, just, he's just like, punch the ground. He was, you know, he did reverse psychology. He's like, yeah. okay, whatever you want. And I was like, <laughs> what I, and then I'm like, what I want is to do this guy is passionate about this thing. He was clearly has been wanting to do this this whole time. Yeah. I'm, Punch the ground, punch the ground for him. And I was such a baby about it. I was like, I'm not wearing the right outfit. My, I, you know, like my shoes are too tall. So then Ori is like, all right, we'll take off your shoes and we'll just hide that, that you're not wearing your tall shoes in it. Right. So I could get down there. And then it's so funny because then, and I was like, but film a different thing too, because this is going to look dumb <laughs> and I don't want it. So film a second thing. And Ori's like, okay, we'll do that too. And then he sent us the thing and I was like, God damn it. He was right. <laughs> it's hard as fuck. <laughs> it's he did such a good job of it like so now i know i now know i learned my lesson always listen to ori whatever he says he's right yeah. so i am going to trust when ori tells me to punch the ground or whatever i punch the ground now yeah. Yeah. do what ori says those of you that do a video with him if he tells you to punch the ground just punch the ground he just knows what he's doing ground. don't waste time yeah what's with you guys destroying nature though like we got the earth shattering we got this the forests <laughs> like going fucking crazy like we got it we got it Huh? It's free. It's outside. It's free. Free real estate. It's free. I didn't have to pay for to to rent that. That's fair. That's it's fair. True. That's fair. Punch it. But yes, of course, we got the the fear of fear EP. So you guys have been. Oh God, how long since Eternal Blue? Is it twenty twenty one? Twenty twenty one. So it's been two Over years. Two years. Yeah. Jesus, it's twenty. I thought it was. That's fucking crazy. That's so crazy to think. So you guys have done Rotoscope, and then we, of course, have the Fear of Fear coming out. So, like, how's how's the transition after Eternal Blue? Because I think I talked to Mike. I'm not sure. I think, was it was it after Eternal Blue for a bit? Yeah, yeah. We, we talked for a little bit after that. It was right around, I think it was uh, around fall or Christmas, something like that. Right. And then you guys did next year, and then it was Rotoscope. So, like, since all of that, like, you guys have just been doing your thing. It's been so cool. Just as a fan, seeing you guys obviously grow and grow and grow and just, you know, make make the bangers, destroy the ground and stuff like that. Like, how is, you know, yeah, going crazy tours. How is that? How's all the effect been since, since Eternal Blue? Like, I think with Eternal Blue, it was a very unique situation. Obviously, there is a bunch of crazy shit happening in the world, but there was so much, there was so much like time and all this pent up. Anticipation. anticipation and so getting that out was very cathartic but then afterwards because of that process we're all like well we want to try something polar opposite so doing rotoscope was again it was just another experiment it was another thing that we could kind of do the polar opposite with hmm. uh the fear of fear honestly if i was to describe it it's very much going back to like the original intention um with the ambience and everything i mean courtney's very much got this crazy concept and mm. you know it, it's very uh it's all one long song essentially so um oh, sick. Okay. I think through all that making all that music and and, and uh touring i i think it's just kind of positioned us to know what we want to do moving forward but 
without having that experience with Eternal Blue and figuring out what we liked and what we didn't like, um, I don't know if we would have put this out. So it's uh, it's really great that it's out in a couple of days, and um, I'm excited for everybody to hear it and to listen to it start to finish. Yeah, the Eternal Blue like stress. Eternal Blue just to, the understatement was just that stressed me out. Hmm. I <laughs> I never you just don't think you think of slowly progressing right, A B steps. You know you don't think of I we I felt like we got like launched like a slingshot, and sometimes. It was like I'd read articles about us from different people, and it was all I was like, "What in the hell?" It's like people are like trying to see who can make the most hyperbolic statement about our band, you know? Like, like no headline was just like "Spirit Box." They are good, you know. <laughs> Those were just good. my thumbnails, but yeah, not yeah. That... It's like they are good. <laughs> I like Spirit Box. They're like good job, guys. It was all like the revolution. Right, right. You know, and, and I'm like, girl, I didn't. I'm just trying to make breakdowns and shit, and have fun, make and and, and make. I see. I saw that. I got you guys. Don't worry. I know y'all trying to just make the heavy, chunky bangers. Don't you worry. You know, like, you don't. You can't overthink stuff like that, and it's too much to live up to because it's not the reality of like, of of any new band, you know, making music. So I'm happy to to have that first eat the first album be done and so we we can move on and now there's not this like i just felt this like so much hype from that it was too much pressure on us i felt like we had to if we didn't make the next like game changing like hybrid theory lincoln park album or something then we were like failing you know well it was interesting actually because i know you just brought up that we spoke but mm -hmm. i think i was venting about it to you on our on our last talk and i right. actually saw some comments I made a comment. I said that um, people started caring around, um, you know, the the start of the pandemic. And there's a lot of comments being like, I don't, I don't understand why he's saying that people just started caring. You know, they had this and this and this. But that's not what I meant. What I meant to say and what, what, what I, mm -hmm. my intention behind that statement was that the industry started really paying attention around the start of the pandemic. Right. And there's no, there's no handbook. And there's no written rule about starting a metalcore band that the industry starts caring about at the start of a time frame where you cannot tour. Yeah. So basically, we went from having no proof that we could perform and, you know, this wild random internet band to then this expectation of like, if you don't deliver a perfect album, then your career is pretty much going to be done. We can't afford to mess up. Right. Yeah. So it's nice it's nice to break away from that and to be able to kind of analyze the music and you know in this ep's case like kind of revisit what made us start it in the first place and go back to the original mentality and yeah i mean it's just been a great experience it's been very cathartic for us mm -hmm. yeah but we're still new so yeah we're still we still have a lot to prove but it's nice to break away from that for yeah. sure and well. doing eps is so rewarding because it, like if we Instead, it would be honestly in our best interest to have done a second LP for mm -hmm. contractual obligations, financial obligation, all that stuff, like technically business side of it, that would be more beneficial all around. But creatively doing the EP is what we want to do because then we don't, we're not limited to like an album cycle yeah. just put, and just put out songs that we just made, you know, we just made these songs in and finished them up in January. So that's more like farm to table. They're not like sitting in the yes. ether yeah. for like two years and then coming out with an album cycle and you're trying to maximize how many units you sell and all that boring stuff that mm -hmm. we don't actually care about. We just want to put our music out. Yeah. That must be so much more like refreshing, just like, uh, yeah, not sitting on a song for fucking two years. You get sick of it after a while. You're like, oh, yeah, this is out now, right? Like, it's, it's, I, we've listened to it a million times. We've tweaked everything as much as possible. Here you go, guys. We're, you know, and it's, it's cool that you guys can still like be hyped as, as fuck about like something because it's not, hasn't been there for so long and it's still like new for you guys, even. That's so I'm excited to, I'm excited to tackle album too, but like, this EP is, I think, our best work ever. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy to to be able to present it all as one long piece. 
because it is we haven't marketed it like that like right. we're not trying to i just don't i just personally i didn't want it to be like this novel thing like i just want to see if people can like feel without me stating it hmm. that this is a concept story and, and all the songs connect together and and there's a reason why they all feel like they loop together it's all part of right it, it's all part of this thing so i just want to i want to see if people can like if i did a good job of presenting that just when they hear it and mm -hmm. then well i just want to see i'm just like what if what if, what are they gonna think yeah so that the expectations just listen to the songs and then if they notice all the extra like if they notice something like that it's more of like a bonus instead of like people critiquing the execution of just that concept which is so annoying instead of just are the songs fucking awesome <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. pretty much <laughs> yeah. you, you guys were mentioning going back kind of like to the old like i don't know if you meant roots by just like mentality or if you also meant sound but what i noticed with some of these tracks is you guys back a little bit with that creepy heavy and you guys do creepy heavy weird like really well it's such a weird type of heavy where it's creepy with the ambience and the soundscapes and also courtney with your voice and how you're your your rhythmically and the melodies you choose that really accent things in this really dark it's not like evil it's creepy kind of way and again it kind of almost feels like it has a bit of that like i wobble bleeding in from your guys time in there like what how are you guys so good at that creepy heavy <laughs> basically <laughs> like it's do you consciously think of that or no uh this time around yes actually okay. uh, you know a lot of the the ambience um and everything around all of the interludes between the songs blending them all into one another me, it's funny we, we filmed a lot of the studio vlogs on um, a vhs camera and so offloading that stuff you have to do it in real time so i've been slowly doing that and it's been a nightmare because you know you hit play and then the computer starts feeding it and like i filmed for hours at a time so i can't just i can't just like be like okay i'm gonna sit here and watch it or whatever like i have to go do stuff or whatever but I forgot how much time we spent on just the feel and the ambience of all of it, because not only did I buy a bunch of like obscure, weird pedals to throw mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff through, I filmed the entire process. So like a, some of the footage is just me and Dan sitting there and like, it's, it's just filming our back and like, I'm literally taking like a pedal and I'm just like tweaking it like this. And he's going, no, not like that. And I'm like, oh shit, wait, wait, <laughs> there it is. And I'm like, so we're just like nerding out for hours at a time. So it was very, there was a lot of happy mistakes where things kind of lined up and we we're like, oh, like, you know, melodically that makes sense and that can now collide into one another. Now that's bridged the gap. Other stuff, um, it was very well thought out where we had to like go in and be crazy nerds about it. So I'm excited yeah. that you got that and that you feel that because we kind of, you know, I, di I did that on the first EP. I, I had nothing but time. So I spent right. a lot of time yeah. making sure that like anything that sounded creepy or weird, you know, it was like an obscure instrument and it wasn't just like, mm -hmm. oh, I pulled up some preset on a synth patch and just hit a note. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like actually like sound design, you know, it's actually like intended to make you feel something. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm stoked that you got that and uh, that you get it. Cool. Yeah, especially like with modern metal bands, like it seems like like production obviously has taken a lot more of like a forefront when it comes to just random layers of cool fucking samples and noises that just add so much to the experience where like even breakdowns it's not about you know how many like how fast can a guitar go during a breakdown it's like no how can you make the most grooviest headbangable thing with all the soundscapes and production amplifying this into like another realm and then the vocals also coming in and just transforming everything in this like unique way that again on paper if you describe your guitar it might like seem simple but like when you piece it all together and you see the 500 layers that might take to kind of get that sound it's it's wild and, and crazy in the modern day it, you know, it's like the jump scare versus the like existential horror that you could have the creepy like long zoom mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah yeah, pretty yeah. much those, those are the two differences it's, it's like shock value great. or like you know actual dread <laughs> <laughs> which I, I think cellar door honestly like yeah it, it's supposed to make you feel like really bad yeah when you listen to it, it made me feel really good but it yeah sure oh, also okay. it, bad, yeah bad in a good way bad in a good way, yeah, bad, yeah. Bad in a good way. well yeah because it was so fun i was listening to that track specifically too and i mean jaded also banger and everything else you guys have been throwing out but like cellar door and hearing like you guys get to like the quote-unquote chorus and i was I was like, is this the this is there, this is the chorus, isn't this? And I'm like, yep, all right, it is this crazy, heavy, 
space space just like end of the world it gave me more of like elements actually of what bands like humane's last breath and like valjarta and stuff are kind of doing but you guys turned it into like this catchy chorus and i'm like what the fuck like that's that's evil <laughs> that's dark as fuck and again hearing it the whole package together with just that breakdown again referring back to courtney smashing the fuck out of the earth and you guys just that's ori yeah yeah <laughs> Four to the flooring it. I was just I'm I'm so stoked because I can imagine that going off live just absolutely monstrously and fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be a fun one for sure. I can't wait. Yeah. Um it, it the whole thing's been fascinating watching people react to different songs that we've been putting out this whole time. Mm. I it's as a as a musician, I don't wanna speak for like all musicians uh in this genre but i wonder if it's it, you have a similar thing too where like you have a vocalist who can do all singing or all screaming or whatever right. and so it gives you a lot of flexibility but i find it really entertaining how much uh people at least in our world like really it's the the binary of like singing and screaming and then like the tone of the music yeah. behind singing or screaming like i think really, you mean clean vocals cl oh yeah clean <laughs> dirties dirty vocals and um vocals. Yeah. They, it got gets people tight it represents i think it's because of this weird fear of bands selling out or something hmm. that people get really stressed out they need almost like the uh, putting out a heavy song is like reassurance for them we watch this in real time when we watch yeah when we watch like a live stream of our song being out and we right. see comments like you can see the singing there's like so much concern of like oh my god you're, you're singing like it's a pop song oh no and then there's like then you just throw a, some screaming in there and then all of a sudden the tide turns and the comments go yay they haven't sold out they're <laughs> they're still the band i like and i'm like yeah just say that you like three of my songs and leave like we have we don't even have 40 songs so it's like the band's not changing and it's not just our band it's like this with any band yeah. um it's the band's not changing it's just there's several different facets to what yeah. kind of music you want to put out so just because we put out cellar door doesn't that's not like a manifest of saying from now on that's all you're gonna fucking hear cellar door from the from the left to the right and then we put out a slow song and then it's like Fuck breakdowns. <laughs> Fuck all that shit. We're never doing that again. We only sing Celine Dion ballads. There's more, you know, only like only 1980s Billy Joel covers. Only 1980s Billy Joel <laughs> covers. And so good choice. That's interesting. I and I, I'm trying. I try to analyze why that is, and I think it's. I think it's because anything that's ever been like underground, you know, you want exposure for the bands that you love, but you also, I think, people feel. A sense of you know in a positive way a sense of ownership and protection over their community yeah and they don't get like appropriated and like hmm. the, the fun sucked out of it they, yeah you know because you know there's been a, a, a change in bands in our world of of you know going from just like let's hop in a van a van with our friends to like people having producers and songwriters writing for them being like, I want octane bangers, octane bangers. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's changed. That's a real thing. People say we want octane bangers. Octane core, it's a genre. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's I, so I get people, They it's almost like a bit pearl clutchy, you know, mm -hmm. like for bands to, to do that. But what's I'm like, what's the point of putting out the same thing over and over? Like, let's yeah. have some fun. Yeah. Well, that's what I love what you guys did with, uh, I mean, even before it, it, Eternal Blue, just with the singles, and I could see while you guys were rolling that out, like, I could, I was like, okay, this is the, you know, I, I don't remember if Holy Roller came before Constance or it was reverse, and Blessed Be was in there too. I don't know exactly what the order was, but I could tell, I was like, okay, this is kind of the more general track. Here's the hilarious, heavy, what the fuck, you know, Holy Roller at that time. And then having like Constance, but because you guys set that standard so early of like, we're a band that does all of this different shit, like deal with it. I think it also makes fans much more open when you guys have, like it makes you guys have that freedom, which some bands don't do that, right? They do the same record three times and it's maybe only heavy. And then it's like the most scary shit ever if they include like a clean vocal anywhere because their fans are going to be fucking <laughs> ready to box them. 
right? And I don't, and I think people should critique, you know, just because you tried something new doesn't mean that it's um, above critique or anything like that. Yeah. But it's the anxiety that I, I get this anxiety, I get this, maybe I'm projecting on these people, I don't know, but I, I feel this anxiety mm -hmm. from them. I feel, I imagine, I always tell Michael, I imagine the, a dude in his, in his, his room on his laptop with an Excel spreadsheet, doing count, like doing the ratios of like singing to screaming. And it's not coming from a place of like, of them hating. It's coming from a place of concern. concern. They're right. concerned. I mean, they've gotten, they've had bands that they loved change. Yeah. But also I think that we all forget that we've all changed. Yeah. And so things that we loved when we were teenagers that were so impactful on us. Yeah, that band changed, but also we were open to those things then. And maybe, you know, you look back on it 10 years later and you're like, what the fuck was that? What am I thinking? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, like, I love writing heavy stuff, but I also love writing yeah. catchy melodic stuff. And that's because I listen to all ends of the spectrum when it comes to music. So people that only listen to heavy stuff are not going to enjoy the soft stuff and vice versa. And that's fine. It doesn't matter. You yeah. Know, but we'll find our people there's we're we're finding them we're finding they're out them. there yeah yeah well i think you guys like because we talk about this all the time too because obviously modern metal is i feel like m more accepting than it's ever been even though it's it's got some ways to go <laughs> you know like the scene of like being okay with that shit but like we always talk like the, i feel like the 2010s because there was so many bands trying to on purpose just get on radio that they ruined it for bands that just wanted to embrace both worlds and make bangers. And so like, you're right. I think so many fans of those bands are so used to getting disappointed that now they're just like, oh, this is, you know, I expected this and I got this, even if it's arguably actually really good and I enjoy and listen to it and had it on repeat for the last fucking week. I'm going to complain because I'm scared my band now is only going to go and do this forever and abandon me like the other bands that went all to try fucking radio and it's funny because heavy is kind of more popular than ever nowadays which is the weirdest shit <laughs> you know, the controversy is now that i think the tide is turning mm -hmm. is i think people are not used to hearing non-super pushed singing mm. oh you mean like more like the deftones chill like vibe stuff or yeah, like i like like if you know what i mean if you put me if, if you put me and my like male counterparts all in the same tuning hmm. and we're all singing the same chorus, like my voice is higher than those guys. So naturally, like I, I, doesn't, I don't have to push my voice to sing that part. Right. You know, maybe, it, but whereas the guys, they do. So people, I feel like people are really take, they don't like, the, they, I feel like a lot of people listen to us and think that like our, vo my vocals are like low energy, but I just like singing like that sometimes, you know? That's so that's, I think that's changing though. I think that guys are now starting to feel more like expressive mm -hmm. and, and um, like as far as their vocal style, they can sing and, and sing in a more intimate way and, and it's okay. Cause it used to just be like bass player singing, we will overcome, you know, screamer going this and then the, and then the bass player singing as high as humanly possible going, yeah. Right, right. And then blowing their voice out after four shows. And so like those, those, I think that's obviously that's still sick, but, um, I feel like people are starting to warm up to my vocal style a little bit. Um, because I think all of us kind of like, we're all so inspired by bands like Deftones. It can't help, you know, all of our generation of bands, like oh, yeah. that vibe cannot be helped, but like be absorbed by us. Yeah. That's a super, it's so weird seeing like new metal and Deftones being like popular than they've ever been, if not more. And like especially through like the alternative scene and like TikTok and <laughs> thirst traps and all that on TikTok too. It's so like cool. crazy. <laughs> that music's sexy. I think it's yeah. just time. You throw, that, you throw those records on and they um, a lot of them sound like they were made like a couple of years ago. Yeah. You know, there's something about that time frame where like they just got it right and it just sounds so good. And it just kind of, you know, for some people that haven't heard it, they're like, wait, is it, what is this band? And then they start looking into it. They're like, holy shit, they're old as hell, you know? And then they start getting into their discography. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. That's cool. Like I, I, that's, that's like every band's dream is to have not just one generation or two, like to have now three generations of mm -hmm. fans, like without having to change who you, and compromise anything, how you play. Like it's that's insane. so cool. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, and I mean, especially now, like with bands combining like the chillest of chill with the heaviest of heavies, because you know, let's listen to Deftones a little. Let's listen to like Lauren Shore. It's like it seems like bands. I feel like bands are also getting better at combining all of these things, so it's making a bit easier for people to listen to it, and then people are also just getting less bitchy about it. <laughs> you know, they're just like, yeah, okay, like cleans. I'm not a fan of cleans, but like I'll throw it on. It sounds good. Like I'm not going to be annoying. And bands are also getting better at being like, okay, when we do heavy, we do it. Like, we're doing this right. We're not going to half-ass the heavy. And when we do a vibe track, we're gonna, you're going to vibe the fuck out. And you're going to be dancing and, you know, doing all the moves and getting ready to upload that shit to TikTok, right, if you need to. You know, and, and everything in between. So, I, I, yeah, I think it's going in a much better direction. But, yeah, there's still always just the fun scene of how it goes. It takes a second for... I think people to adapt but uh, do you guys feel like even for yourselves because i call you guys just more like a variety modern metal band at this uh, this way because you guys do both ends of the spectrum like do you feel like it's been easier over the years and people have been more accepting of seeing both of those styles that you guys do and everything in between together I know, I, for me the way that i look at it is you know like when i was younger and i first heard like a like you know i first heard like some fire um <laughs> When I first heard like some fire when I was like 14 years old, I was like, what is this? And I was so confused and I didn't understand it. And, but there, but there was something that made me like keep going back to it. And then I was very much accepting of it. And I didn't even have a question about what it was or mm. why they were doing it. And I feel like us as a band only being around for X amount of time when we first came out, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were like, I don't know what to think about this. This isn't for me or whatever. But like, we're not going to go anywhere and we're not going away. And we would, we put out, you know, not like a whole lot of music, but in a small period of time, I feel like it is a decent uh, amount of a catalog. We have like 38 or 40 songs or something. And I think that after a while, you know, you know, those people that maybe weren't used to it or just needed, you know, more time with it, you know, maybe there is a song that speaks to them or whatever. Maybe they've just kind of, you know, gotten used to the sound and, and the whole vibe of it and they're more accepting of it. Um, I know that for me, like with a lot of bands, it will take me a few listens. It will take me, um, you know, a long time to really click with it. And I know it's a tall order to have to go through a catalog and like, you know, we are so eclectic in a sense, like there's so many ups and downs. So yeah, may maybe it just takes some people extra time and they come around. But what I've noticed um, is that the ones that really get it, uh, they really care and they really love it. And we're very thankful for that. So it's been yeah. really interesting to see the whole um, progression since day one. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a trip to say the least. And this is just anecdotal. Like I don't have data on this, but anecdotally, it seems like if I were to like take people that I talk to about music now versus 15 years ago, people now don't seem to as much go, I think cause there's so much music that they're exposed to all the time. Yeah. And it's not just whatever is like, sh there's not just, there's MTV and I'm told to listen to this. They're, they're discovering music, uh, or at least they feel like they're discovering music more organically. Um, <laughs> I feel like people are more, uh, like a, a lot of different genres of music now. Whereas like, I can't believe this, but like 15 years ago, it like, like, the met like metal people that I would know, I would be so shocked because they didn't like pop music they right. didn't like rap music they didn't like r b they didn't like any music really other than whatever they deemed metal and then everything else was like because i think people got so caught up in technical musicianship mm -hmm. and i did not say musicality just technical musicianship i feel like for some reason that made people feel like intellectually superior and then like everything else was lower hanging fruit, like right. more uh, easily accessible or something. And it was really like elitist and douchey. And I feel like that's not cool to be like that anymore. No. You know, I, like I always find it so shocking when people are like, wow, you listen to this, you listen to this artist. I'm like, yes, I listen this recording artist, biggest recording artist of all time. Yes, I'm aware yeah. of them. And I it's like well, millions yeah. of other billions of other people. So I feel like bands and fans are more like uh, eclectic now. Mm -hmm. least, again, that's just anecdotal. I could just be who I was hanging out with 
Um, no, I, but, I, I agree with you on that. And I'll, like, that's the thing too, is nowadays it's cool seeing modern metal bands take, I think more from non-metal stuff because that's what's, that's actually what's evolving metal. Cause if they're just take copy pasting, you know, with bands in the eighties and nineties and two thousands only did, which two thousands, I guess is a bit more popular with what bands are doing as like a reinvention now. But if they only did that and they didn't take a little with like, yo, the weekend kind of fucks hard. Like let's take some big ass pads and throw that shit in kind of sick. You know, Joji's kind of ripping and seeing that in the modern production, that's what I'm actually see that's where I'm seeing a lot of the evolution and then just in general weird pockets of like like Thal, because that music is just not made until twenty thirty. I don't know how that shit even existed before that. Thal Fox way too hard. Um there's a cool reverse of it too, where we're seeing all these little hints of heavy music, little twinkles of heavy music in pop acts. Like yes. then I version like you can tell that so and so and so and so their music director likes metal because like I was just watching like Doja Cat just had her opening um of her new tour last night in San Francisco and they came out doing Tia Tamara and it had it has like I saved it to show you it has heavy guitars behind it yeah like when like flame shooting up and stuff and I I was like that's so cool like just it's amazing it's amazing for our world you know what I mean I I I love seeing that because the guitar it, is back. It helps us huge. <laughs> the guitar is back. Oh, it's it, Little Uzi Vert's album had Bring Me feature in Baby Metal. And they were metal songs. They were just modern metal. It was produced by the Pale Dust guy, Dadai, which is fucking crazy. That, he, like, so, so good. And I, I love seeing that too. I'm like, sick. Like, a lot of these artists are super into this stuff. And it see and seeing it more as, like, metal is... You know, it's always been blended with the alternative universe, but it being much more like combined with just alts and TikTok being a big thing that pushed it as fun as TikTok is. It's still being a thing that like young kids are getting into and they're getting exposed to that and they do not care about anything other than is it good and like, is it fun? That's all they fucking care about, which I love. It's even powered by a genre as much as we were when we were their age. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's 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 so different it's so refreshing and i and i hope it kind of continues like that because that's that's how the metal if not the metal scene is just gonna fucking get boring <laughs> it's on the night as it is it's on the, it's on the <laughs> i will say the tw- the 20s have been better were better than the te- the 10s had some bangers fair the 10s were scary for me fam there was that was a scary period after crab core bands had no idea what to do dark times if you weren't wearing toms and wearing nudie jeans and running in place, <laughs> you weren't writing extreme, you know, full full body like the worst thing you've ever seen on a t shirt, and then things would, like hail Satan. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for the 20 year cycle where in 2030 that's going to be popular again. It's going to be. I'm stoked for 2030. Yeah. Gold, gold foil prints are coming back, baby. I actually want to do a gold foil print. Like, ironically, I think it would be sick. That'd be hilarious. To do, like, a gold foil shirt that just says, I hate my mom and dad on it. And <laughs> that'd be so sick. <laughs> I think that was it. My mom and dad. It that could- would be sick like a shirt. So yeah. edgy. It's a, Yeah, there we go. Make, make it happen. It'll, chat's already losing their shit. They're down with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was in chat. What are they saying? What kind of stuff? They've just been laughing, actually, and just having a good time. They're pretty fucking sure. There's 1,300 people. Thank you guys for coming to hang. Again, the Fear of Fear Spirit Box coming out Friday. I have to ask you guys because I was going to do one of two things for Friday because it's Spirit Box Day. It's it's Spirit. Okay, there's a few other things too, but I, it's Spirit Box Day. It's Spirit Box. Oh, yeah, and Silent Planet and Dying Wish. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we have Garrett on the show on Friday too. I was, it's, it's also Silent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, but I was either going to do a little fun like review for the holy p or i was gonna pick one track and do a react for it and i was gonna ask you guys out of the ones that aren't out yet which one if i do a video should i should i check out that's tough ultraviolet ultraviolet okay it's ultraviolet ultraviolet yeah simple as that (laughs) well besides that guys i mean last last basic question any fun news or things upcoming that you guys can share that won't get you in trouble with uh with mommy and daddy or any of that or yeah oh there's some things that we're so close to finalizing yeah they're not finalized yet so like 
I can't even allude to them because it might all fall through and they'll look like a douchebag. It might all crumble. I can't even allude to yeah. you know? But like, yeah. but right now it looks like we're not we we're, we're, we're not gonna be headlining next year. Right. We're gonna be supporting some cool shit, Ooh. doing some stuff. Um, okay. Uh, because we need to take well. Originally, okay, we'll just say this. There, originally, we were, our, our motto has been like, okay, we need to take next year off. Mm. Unless beep asks, asks us to come out, then we do. Then we Did do you it. beep? <laughs> yeah. And then, so we're like, but anything else, like we, we have to, we have to do this. You've now. never heard of beep before? Beep. Oh, You've no, I've heard of beep. They throw it out. They can throw it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then so now we've possibly been summoned. So we might we might tour next year and be yes, my children, you may come on the tour, come here. And if that happens, then we'll go on tour. And if not, we ain't doing shit. We gotta make album two. We gotta make our album. Yeah. Album yeah. So we're, we're entering hibernation mode to write and uh yeah, as soon as we're able to say what's going on, we'll let you know. But we're done for the year now, which is great. As oh, far yeah, as like, like doing shows, because we really need to focus on writing. And some people are amazing at writing and performing, like writing all day, do their show, get back on the bus and keep writing. Yeah. But that, that doesn't work for us yet. We're so, I think we're like too high strung about the show. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think we need, we need to, as of now, um, I think that's something that I would love to be able to do someday. But Currently, I feel like we keep those things separate. We it's really hard for us to focus on creating new stuff while we're like in tour mode. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to just hang out and write music and watch Michael write stuff. And he goes, "You like this?" And I go, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. Throw My favorite is if I if I just walk by and go, it sounds like just like a song that it already exists and i just walk up he's like no it doesn't like, yeah. are you guys the most brutally honest with like if you had to get critiques from somebody from what is it is it you two with each other that's where you'll get the most brutally honest one i'm a, yeah okay it's really a two-way street though i feel like i'm more critical of you but then yes when i'm doing my singing if a lot of the like, times i'll be like you know that could just be why don't we just maybe try to you know and with her, why don't like, you love me anymore yeah and with her it's just like, it sounds like this Sounds like this. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Sounds like this. That's Sounds literally like this it. Band. So I, I, try, I try to be a little more strategic, and she's just jab, twist. We don't have pull. time for that. We don't have time <laughs> for for um. Duly noted. I'll, yeah, duly. I'll remember that. Oh, I'll remember tell, that. Tell me to duly noted. That's like our thing. Okay, the last. Ends. Yeah, last thing. Do uh, we say duly noted because anytime someone like wrongs us or like mm -hmm. anytime something happens, instead of reacting to it, we all just go. Duly noted. Hmm. I look Duly up. Duly noted. I look up who liked stuff. Yeah. So we, look we have our DN folder. I say our... duly fucking noted. Duly noted. Am, duly noted. Am I am I in that folder? Are we? Oh no, no, you're, you're not. In the, if you were in the, oh you're you're in the. Uh, I watched your uh, reaction to the void. You're duly fucking noted there. You're duly. I thought it was a pretty decent song. I've you guys, all the jaded, perfect you know, you song. This whole interview. Jade, <laughs> perfect <laughs> banger and cellar door fucking beautiful the void solid track solid didn't make me go what the fuck though but it was solid and i gave you guys a solid you if the song doesn't make you freak out then i'm like what the fuck am i doing like, one of these days we're gonna make something that, that nick's gonna hear and he's gonna have to like on air be like i don't like no that. he's not even gonna post the video Oh, I don't know what happened. No, My webcam should. just stopped working. I no, don't know. That's that's why we admire you because that's another. You're honest. Look, I know that you're doing. I I don't mean to keep. You, yeah, you're busy. But I like talking to you about this stuff, and of I like fans about it. But that's another bone I have to pick with mm. the whole metal world. Do me the favor, okay? Mm. All of you watching right now, go find a bad review of a metal album. Does Fantano exist too in this case? Because Fantano throws down pretty hard. Oh, he's the only one he's that the is only real. One. He's the only one. Yeah. And you, like you, and you, and you, like some yeah. people appreciate authenticity. I feel like again, I think it's because our community is so. We don't want to hurt each other. We don't want to like yeah. negative about each other. That's like one of the reasons I love like the hip hop world is because 
they everyone is so self-sufficient and and we all know that <laughs> help each other people are more like i thought that song sucked <laughs> I thought that sucked yeah. you know i love that it's refreshing but we can't we would never do that because all of us need to be of a, a yeah. solid right and like protect a, protect ourselves because a bad review is like the difference between a band you know eating or not sometimes like it's, it's not real serious. seriously like they for for some people and so i'm like i like we need some authenticity and that's going to result now in people being like you want some fucking authenticity <laughs> authenticity my ass i i, pre I people, people think i just say i'm only positive about every single thing so i appreciate that you guys think i'm at least a little critical because i i usually just cover things i like like in terms of the bands i like already like I, if i know i hate a band i'm not gonna fucking what's the point i'm just gonna shit on you like but like if a band i like does something i don't like then i'm like okay well i gotta be critical and explain why I i'm not as much about this but yeah people think i also just say only the nice yeah. Having an, an honest review of something is very refreshing. It's awesome. Yeah, that's why you've been able to foster this community with your viewers. Yeah. Because they trust you. Big you time. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And I feel like that means you're going to have a long career doing that because it's the same reason, like, Aunt Thurman says, Anthony Fantano, he's only talked shit about my band. And he's, like, my favorite, one of my favorite, like, YouTube accounts, like, it's even worse than talking shit. It's indifference. Like he doesn't give a fuck. Like, yeah. like he mentioned us in like weekly roundups, and he's just like not even box, like an actual video. Boring, like generic, in between. Boring, generic shit. Yeah. Whatever. And then he, he, I was gonna ask. He did Spirit Box. Which which track did he? What did he check out? Uh, he's done. He's done a couple singles from time to time. Yeah, uh, in like his roundup video. Oh, Basically, the roundup. Like, okay. Our fans like beg him. Yeah. He, but you know, like, not, I don't know why you keep asking me about this. Every time I listen to it, it's just boring. whatever, boring. Okay, next one. So his indifference is actually more offensive and sad to me, as I'm a fan of him. But even I'm like, you know what? I appreciate that he's just honest. giving his honest review yeah. stuff. Yeah. You don't lack. And that's for coming from someone who got hated on. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I would do anything for Fantano to give me a zero out of 10 on anything I make. I would. No. Yeah, we didn't even get a rating because yeah. it was that's how indifferent he was. It was basically like next snooze. <laughs> I would someday I would love to get reviewed by him. We know we know you need to go though, Nick. No, that's, all, that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all good. The most boring thing, the the funniest thing, and I always remember, and the meanest thing that was ever said to me in my whole life. I've been called a million things doing this for ten years. I'll never forget a person that said boring sound to me. Yeah, dude, that's like the main critique of our band. Yeah. Is like. It's the same thing. I don't care. It's boring. Boring, generic, mid. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you cannot. I might be mid, but you cannot say it's. it's mid generic. is such a mean insult. It's it's so weird because it's so like you don't have to think. You just say mid, right? But it's it's so it, it's piercing. It's a piercing insult that it's like, damn, that's a mean fucking. Insults that really. I mean, for me, like calling someone a clown or a bozo or a bozo. <laughs> That's funny. Those are, yeah, those those cut you to the core. Those yeah. are savage. You're gonna Hello. you're gonna start to see comments. You guys have to do a video clown theme just so you can get the comments now and bring it. And you already did a clown theme video. Yeah, dude. your breakdown video, your metaphor video. <laughs> Threw in those Ronald McDonald photos in there. <laughs> that I made like, that I made you edit, dude. You. <laughs> You know how much other stuff Nick has to do, and I then know. you made him. You made him do that. Like, okay, here's the footage. By the way, I, I included all these photos. I expect you to put them in the video. <laughs> you specifically, they weren't even like transparent. You just said the like random photo with the background. You're just like, just throw them in the fucking video. Ridiculous. You know what? I'll give you advice too about people talking shit. Is that as soon as they're like attacking your appearance or like hmm. for me it's always like you just like them because she's a girl you know oh, as soon as to just say like you just like them because for you they you just like them because you like his youtube channel then as soon as that happens you're like they got nothing on me hmm. you know you're like that's all they can really say about me i'm doing a good job because hmm. all they can really say is take something that makes me a little different and like use that to say that that somehow that thing that's been a struggle hmm. For you, it's like, you know, people that are musicians that also have a YouTube channel, mm. people automatically go, well, you're not into it all the way, even though 
you are what's the difference between that person working at a job and then doing their music too like yeah. you have to diversify that yeah and well so, yeah i do that it's like i want where you won you know I, I well, I guess the point because some it, it's more annoying when it's like random inaccurate. So like I made my own hate thread on Reddit for myself, like I <laughs> on r slash metalcore. I I made my own, and it's it's one of the top posts there ever, and I'm 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 happy with it. I'm like accurate hate thread. Thank you. At least like fucking like get it right. You know, if you're gonna shit on me, get the things correct. Don't you know? Don't get it wrong. And aside from that, you know, everyone has um, the most extreme in both positive and negative are the people that are compelled to comment and everyone in between is like me i've never commented anything bad about anyone on hmm. the internet i'll talk shit in my group chat oh, but okay. nothing's <laughs> nothing's ever compelled me to be like you are not very good a click you know like i i or or positive you know unless it's someone i know so most people just hear it and go that was a song i heard and then they move on yeah. you know so liberating to know that like those negative and positive things are just engagement for your thing that you've made and it's okay and just, it's just nice that people have a place to go to express their opinions and none of us unless they're tagging you in it we don't need to be reading all that stuff that's their private community that we don't need to like kool-aid man into and go hey don't talk shit about my band you know that's, that's their space to kool-aid guy kool-aid yeah. guy that's the perfect way to end it today. Kool Aid guy chat. Courtney and Mike of Spirit Box, The Fear of Fear out on Friday. Go stream it. I'm definitely gonna be checking it out. I'm excited. Uh, I'll probably I'll probably check it out with Garrett on the stream too. I'm excited. To, yeah. I'm so excited for everyone to hear uh, Silent Planet. I, we were just with Dan last night, who worked with them hmm. a bit on it, and. He was just saying, like, we were just talking about how, you know, it's so cheesy when people are like, we've evolved, we've matured. It's such like a generic yeah. thing to say, but because everyone says that, but, you know, he feels and we feel from what we've gone to hear of it, like, they truly have it's incredible. hit the next level it's of very good. cool songwriting. Yeah. And I would love, I would, I'd love to see him play those songs live, like, they're, I've never seen them live, and I, and they seem like amazing musicians. So yeah. they found the yeah. Chaos Emeralds somehow for like the, I don't know where it came from. They just like were like, okay. <laughs> and and it's dope to see. Uh, I don't know who else has come out. There's uh, I only remember is Silent Planet, Dying Wish, Us, and I'm sure there's some other bands coming out with stuff. But it's just cool that there's mm -hmm. you know we can all support each other, and um, there's like a little community of everyone celebrating it. That's cool. Yeah, beautiful. Chat, fear of fear, spirit box out Friday, Courtney and Mike. Guys, thank you so much for coming to hang, you know, shoot the shit with a bunch of people that listen to breakdowns and shit talk on r slash metalcore all day. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. we, we're, we're lurking at all times. We're yeah. lurking on, we look at his chat in the videos and we, we, slow, we, we watch that video and see what y'all are saying. And you guys are all funny. Yeah, you're hilarious. They're you guys are really they're pretty fucking funny. Sometimes they're stupid as fuck, but sometimes they're funny as fuck too. They're, I like they're, how they're and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're they, great. They, yeah, I, I, I feel like I can do a stream at this point where they just go and I can just fucking, I'm just by. I need to do that. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. But so, yes, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm stoked for the EP. Stoked to listen to it. And thank you guys for always making the best bangers. And anytime I can do anything to help spread the, the word of bangers around, always feel free to hit me up, guys. Y'all are Y'all are a blessing. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Anytime. Thanks all for watching us. We appreciate it. Awesome. See so, yeah, you. Have a good have a good evening, guys. Bye. Bye bye.